What's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg, and this is another Chance Encounter. Hey, what's up? I'm Dan Fradenberg. I'm a commercial real estate guy. I'm from the internet. Power line today is kind of close. What's up again? This is Dan Fradenberg. I'm joined today with Joe Evangelisti. Is that how you pronounce that? Yes, sir. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. And for those of you who haven't seen a chance encounter, this is how it works. For all of you beginners out there, I've got the motivations for your next commercial real estate investment or property uh, narrowed down to five different motivations. And then I say, which one's you to my guest who is a commercial investor. And then I go through the six different roles in a commercial deal on my Dan does deal die here. And I say, which one's your core competency that you're most likely to contribute to your next commercial deal. But if you're going to be successful in this business, one of the most important things is being able to introduce yourself. So Joe, could you please introduce yourself for the audience? Oh, that's a ton of pressure, brother. Mm, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, no, my, my name's Joe Evangelisti, man. I'm a, uh, I'm a, a self-storage developer out of uh, South Jersey, and we do, uh, my company's called Legacy Developers. We do primarily uh, ground up uh, self-storage development. We do a little bit of big box uh, renovations as well. All right. Good stuff. Good stuff. So that brings us to the motivation. So I'll share my screen and then I go over and I figure out where I put my mouse. This is amazing. This is the top notch podcast stuff you see here today. I hit present and boom. So everybody, uh, including beginners, know their motivation for wanting to get into their next commercial deal, but they don't necessarily know their role. So that's why I go through motivations first. The first one that I found is some people, especially family offices who rely on their wealth and the cash flow from that wealth to make ends meet. They're looking to preserve their purchasing power because inflation is going to make it so that if they don't keep on building their portfolio, then the party is over. So that's reason number one. Reason number two is the one that made me pivot from tech. The nice thing about being in tech is you get a high salary, but high salary means you're paying the highest amount of taxes. So it made a lot more sense to me to pivot into getting into GP teams and then building wealth in return for my time and effort. So that's what I'm up to. The next reason is the most common one. People want to fast track their retirement. There are two different things that are implied in there that aren't so obvious. One of them is that if you're in your early 20s and you're saying that you're fast tracking your retirement, I'm in my 40s, so I'll tell you to shut up because you haven't started yet. But uh, the bigger one is that um, if you're fast tracking your retirement, it's like you got an end goal in mind. So maybe you're the type to become an accredited investor and then retire to the Philippines where the cost of living is lower or something like that. But at least that's in contrast to the next group who are big on the legacy, the multi-generational wealth. They're so ambitious. They want to buy their entire hometown. They have to have the biggest yacht in the pier, all that kind of fun stuff. But those are the guys who are going to keep on working until they drop. So they're still very, very valuable to have in your GP team. But the last motivation I've found is some people have a section of society. Maybe they want to buy rainforest or take care of animals or whatever it is. But they realize that accumulating wealth is the best vehicle to have real impact on society. And so they're deciding to build wealth so that they can end up helping others. So uh, those are the five different motivations. Uh, so out of those five, what combination of those uh, describes you best, Joe? Dude, this is complicated. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm, a, I'm definitely a blend of a few of these things. I mean, so, you know, I'm definitely on the GP uh, route, of what, like what you described about uh, making that transition from a high paid job to becoming a GP. Uh, you know, my, my big motivation is that, uh, you know, being, being the developer, being the GP, um, you can make a lot of money and, and write a lot of money off. Right. So there's, there's a lot of, there's a lot of benefits to being on that side of things. Um, but at the same time, you know, we, when we built legacy and we built our business, um, it was not only to serve the greater good of us uh, as the investor, as the GPs, my partners, 
uh, was also to do bigger things for our investors, um, i.e. let them ride along with us and have LPs and have equity partners. Um, but it's also the, the greater impact of what we can do for our communities and our towns and, you know, our charities that we support and things like that. We can with bigger, bigger dollars, bigger scale, bigger money, bigger impact, right? So uh, we do a lot of things to support veterans charities. I own a, a veterans foundation um, and, or I should say, I run a veterans foundation that I started about five, six years ago. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we do a lot for um, children's hospital networks. We do a lot for animals and uh, different animal support networks. Um, and, uh, and then just this year, we started getting involved in, um, in uh, children's trafficking with the Operation Underground Railroad uh, uh, charity, which, which is crazy. Um, when, you, when you really look into it, the, uh, the impact that they have and what they do is just, is, you don't even know it's happening because nobody talks about it. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think there's a combination of uh, quite a few of those things you got on your list there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great, and and that's what uh, that's one of the reasons why I ask it. I don't really reveal it to to many people, but you know, it, it's about figuring out what makes somebody tick. You know, where they are in their in their cycle of of a uh, business and all that kind of stuff. But um, as far as the next segment goes, it's talking about the different roles. So for you in the audience, if you're not really familiar with these, I'll explain them as we go. So the first role is repositioner. Part of being a repositioner means you're in acquisitions. One thing that's definitely going on is that you are underwriting it, which means you're doing the math. You're figuring out, does this actually make sense? And the, the reason why you're going through so many deals is because you're looking for upside. And the two main ways that you get upside are either more efficient operations. In other words, you're cutting costs, being more efficient. I also have uh, some other parts of operations that people don't think about. I got the Benjamins going down the toilet to show that, you know, bookkeeping is part of operations. Marketing to make sure that the vacancy rate is low. That's part of operations. And you have to have some uh, things going if you want to be on the GP team. But that's why I mentioned all of these. So right now, real estate is so hot efficient operations probably isn't enough to cut it in a lot of properties and one of the other great ways to get more cash coming in is to get a contractor team once the camera adjusts there we go they fix it up they make it nicer and so that way you can charge more in rent and there's some more upside but if you're from the internet like i am you're definitely also going to need boots on the ground you're going to need a local to make sure that the operations are actually doing their job and that the contractors aren't cutting corners. That's what most people think about when they think of the team that owns a commercial property. But of course, there's more to it than that. There's the bank, the financiers, and another type of financier is a capital raiser. But uh, when you're looking to buy one of these properties and it's worth millions of dollars, you're going to be going to a bank and saying, hey, can you lend me millions of dollars? And the other thing that they're going to be asking for, though, is who's your sponsor? And that's the part that uh, a lot of coaches, they kind of skip over that part. But uh, if you want to buy, say, a 350 unit apartment complex and you want to get a loan, somebody in the fold has to already own a 350 unit apartment complex. And uh, there are a couple other restrictions, like you have to have a certain amount of liquidity. And then also there has to be a balance sheet of a net worth of at least the amount of the loan. But You put all that together, you have a team and a commercial deal. So out of those different roles, uh, Joe, uh, what are your core competencies that you'd be most likely to bring to your next commercial deal? All right. So again, I'm going to give you kind of a sideways answer. So I'm the sponsor, KP. That's really my role. But Mm -hmm. I look at my unique ability for my teams as the visionary and the, the recruiter, right? My biggest role that I provide for people is filling the gaps and putting people, putting what we call asses in the right seats, right? So, you know, one of the things that makes our team really unique is that we're built um, across the entire country. You know, my chief development officer is in Colorado, our acquisitions team's in New Jersey, our finance team's in upstate New York. Um, We're all over the place. And so um, we don't don't really care about location. We care about quality of of, uh, human being and integrity and culture. And so uh, my big role you know, KP is one thing, anybody can sign documents, but what do I really do? What do I bring to the team? It's finding uh, the amazing human beings that are going to actually, you know, fit the right seat, do the right thing, um, and really, you know, take us to the next level. So, you know, besides painting the vision, you know, having the visionary and the story and where we're going and, and, and kind of motivating people to get there, it's getting the right people on the bus to take us there. 
Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. So my next question for you, it's buy box. And, and that means what's the geographic area, the unit count, and uh, usually it's the class. Um, I, I know that uh, with self storage, like it, it would have to be a little bit different, you know, like, like, like the area is still super important, but, but I, I don't think it's uh, uh, quite as set in stone, I imagine, but, but I'm kind of talking out of my whatever, because, <laughs> uh, you know, you're the expert. But uh, as far as the ideal property that it's just way easier for you to say yes to and it's more difficult for you to say no to can you describe that property yeah so i'll start out by saying this i've been doing this for three and a half years now when i first started one of my first mentors in the game told me that you could take a uh, dart and throw it at a map of the united states and build a self-storage facility there and be successful right so let's give you an idea of what the what the industry looks like right now yeah. that doesn't mean you should do that right that just means basically that uh, there's a statistic like 98% of self-storage facilities that are brand new open up and become successful. Now, mm -hmm. in comparison to 65% of small businesses in the first three years uh, fail, I think that's a pretty good, that's a pretty good ratio, but um, that's not what we do. Uh, what we're looking for is I'm looking for expanding MSAs. I'm looking for um, generally Southern states, even though we have a few things going on in Ohio and upstate New York. Um, I'm looking for markets that are expanding. I'm looking for um, uh, demographics that are that are that are growing. I'm looking for income levels that are generally uh, higher, or higher the better, right? Um, and I'm looking for diversity of uh, of industry, right? Like take Atlanta for example. You have Amazon, you have Coca Cola, you have the American Cancer Society, like somewhere where there are there's a big broad uh, diversity in industry, not where it's like one type of industry. Like think about Detroit 50 years ago, the, the auto industry ran the entire city, right? I want to have somewhere where there's multiple types of industry that are that are kind of helping the MSA to expand as well. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, that's beautiful. And uh, so uh, we ended up finding I found you through uh, through Facebook. And uh, I'm not sure if there are some sites or something that are better to uh, to catch you. I tend to be on LinkedIn a lot more than on Facebook. But uh, what's the best way to reach out to you, Joe? Yeah, I mean, people can find me on Facebook as well. They can also go to Invest with Legacy. That's our website, and uh, they can check out future deals or we're working on them. Mm -hmm. All right, cool. And uh, one of my favorite things about uh, commercial real estate in general is is people are so helpful. And I think it's because it's multifaceted. You can't be all of these different things. So the, the entire business is about assisting people. But uh, without breaking any SEC restrictions, because, you know, we, we can't entice investors. Uh, can you please describe the person in real estate where you can help them more than anybody else? Like maybe it's a beginner or maybe it's somebody with a construction background background or just like who knows what's who can you help more oh, yeah, than I, mean, else? Was, I think that we're helping people every single day right we have we have great joint venture partners that, that help us find deals we help them develop them we create opportunity with them uh, we obviously you know it's not an SEC rule to say that we have accredited investors that we do business with all the time they must be accredited anyway so we can't have a conversation with them unless they are right. um, we have uh, great uh, construction partners all over the country that uh, are doing big commercial you know contracts with us um, so, I mean, look, I, I just love having, uh, I love having business conversations, but you know, if they're around self storage, it's great. So anybody wants to reach out to me, send me a direct DM. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Maybe there's a fit somewhere. All right. All right. And that's a beautiful segue for me to say a couple things to the camera. One is that if you don't know me, I'm Dan Fradenberg. My background, other than doing all this podcasting, is in e-commerce technology and mass marketing. So that's lead capture and online sales funnels. And uh, what I do is I help in the operations side and the marketing side uh, in a, a GP situation. But the other thing that I really want to mention to you is that if you look under my hand, over here there's a red button and it makes me sad it says subscribe and it's way better when it's gray and all you have to do is you need to take your cursor and you click on that and then it'll turn gray and it costs you nothing and then that means YouTube pays for these videos instead of me which is way better so pretty please with sugar on top hit that subscribe button and all it means is that my videos might show up on your list of suggestions but there's still no guarantee of that especially if you watch a lot of like I don't know other types of videos anyway so pretty please uh, do make that happen but Joe this has been really awesome getting to know you a little bit better thanks for coming out yeah man thanks for having me all right sweet